Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 17th February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss seven topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see small introduction regarding the topics. Now we are going to have our discussion. So first topic it is regarding federal judiciary. So I think you might be knowing about this term federalism, right? So federalism that is nothing but there is a proper sharing of uh, powers between center and as well as state. So if you're talking about this federal judiciary, it is mainly talking about Supreme Court and as well as High Court. And this topic it is very much important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic it is about after the budget crypto signal, India awaits reforms. So this article which is mainly talking about this cryptocurrency. Actually what happened in the recent budget, our finance minister made a statement regarding this tax on this crypto transactions. So because of this, this is a news. Here this article it is important from your economy point of view which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic it is about states can ease COVID curbs, say center. Okay, and this topic it is important from your governance point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper 2. And next topic is regarding NATO and US skeptical of Russia troop pullout. Okay, so in yesterday's lecture we studied that because of influence of US and as well as UK, there is decreasing of troops from Russian side across this Russia-Ukraine border. And this article which is mainly talking about development in that topic. So this is important from your international relations which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic is about center presented much rosier picture of OROP. So this topic which mainly talking about one important scheme. And next topic it is regarding solar waste handling policy. So as you all know India is having an ambitious goal of 175 gigawatts of renewable energy and the target here okay let me know the target here of 175 gigawatts okay so whenever we are talking about this solar uh, solar energy or so renewable energy like especially solar energy so here one side we can go for generation of electricity for sure and another side the, we also have some waste right but regarding that waste there is no proper policy in india so this is one important topic regarding governance which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic is about depression remains a neglected global health crisis. Okay. So this article which mainly talking about depression. So it is according to Lancet report. So this is important from your health which mainly comes under GS paper too. So these are the topics now we are going to have our discussion. So now let us try to start our discussion with a quote. So this quote it is regarding education. Education, it is not learning facts, but training of the mind to think, okay? So whenever you're writing any essay regarding education or any answer regarding education, you have to give this, okay? So education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. So this is a statement which is given by Albert Einstein. And now let us try to see first topic is regarding federal judiciary. So we're talking about levels of judiciary. So apex court we have supreme court and below this we will be having high court and below this we will be having subordinate or district courts. So this article which is mainly talking about supreme court and as well as high court. Okay. So this article is very very important especially from your mains point of view. So now let us try to see what is the central theme. So central theme says that now we are seeing there is some imbalance. Okay. Imbalance in which Supreme Court of India needs to address by empowering high courts. So this article says that now what happened recently means because of some steps that are taken by Supreme Court, it is making Supreme Court more powerful. So to address this imbalance between this high court and as well as Supreme Court, so here Supreme Court need to take some steps, especially that is empowering of high courts. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you are talking about federalism, Already you know that this federalism it is a one of the important feature of our constitution. Okay, it mainly talks about limited executive, limited legislature and as well as judicial authority. Okay, and these three things or these three bodies they need to coordinate with each other. 
okay so we need a limited limited executive limited legislature limited judiciary okay and we should ensure that these three bodies they are coordinating with each other and they are independent of each other so this is the one important and the basic concept of this federalism so actually you know that india is the union of states okay india is the union of states and the supreme court of india supreme court of india which is apex court of the country which had held that federal nature of the country this is one of our basic structure of indian constitution so here federalism it is one of the basic structure of constitution which mainly set by our supreme court itself and if we are talking about judiciary system in india it is integrated judiciary system okay so here if you are talking about federalism we are not completely unitary and we are not completely federal but we are having a quasi federal right so here what happened we do not have a very strong center or very strong states we will be having a states which are mainly coordinated by a weak center so this type of federalism is federalism it is called as quasi federalism that we can see in india and the idea in which mainly lies at the bottom of federalism is that each of the separate states they should have approximately equal political rights and thereby they need to maintain their non dependent okay their non dependent characteristic within the larger union okay so if we talking about this idea of federalism it mainly says that each of the separate states should have approximately equal power rights okay so each and every state should have equal political rights and as well as they need to maintain their non dependent nature and next one is if you are talking about integral requirement of federal state it is that there be a robust federal judicial system so we need a robust federal judicial system and this system which may interprets constitution and therefore it may adjudicates upon the rights of federal units and as well as rights of central units that is mainly between the citizens and at and as well as these units okay so here integral requirement of this federal state it is nothing but so we need to interpret the constitution and therefore whatever the rights whatever the federal units are present and even central units are present so we need to have a proper coordination between the citizen and as well as these units and the federal judicial system which mainly comprises of supreme court and as well as high court okay so we will be having two courts which mainly adjudicate the rights of the citizens and if you are going back during the framing of our constitution dr b r ambedkar stated that indian federalism it is mainly through a dual polity but we do not have dual judiciary so we will be having integrated judiciary but indian federalism it is mainly through dual polity but not dual judiciary so this is the one important thing which mainly said by dr b r ambedkar in this uh, constitutional assembly and if you are talking about the high courts and as well as supreme courts from one single integrated judiciary having jurisdiction and even they are mainly providing remedies in all cases arising under this constitutional law civil law or criminal law okay so which mainly arise under this constitutional law civil law or criminal law they mainly talked about one single integrated judiciary system and this system which have jurisdiction and it will it can also provide some remedies in all the cases so what happened we have supreme court which is apex court and we are having the highest court in the state that is high court so these high courts and as well as supreme court they form a single integrated judicial system and they mainly protect the rights and as well as they will deal with some uh, remedies especially in the cases regarding this constitutional law civil law and as well as criminal law and uh, next important thing is a an equality of power so if you are talking about our indian constitution which mainly says that power of high court okay and as well as power of supreme court they are equal okay in this age equality of power of high court and as well as supreme court okay so one important thing here is high court judge not being a subordinate to supreme court judge so one important provision in our constitution says that the power of high court judges is equal to the power of supreme court judges that means this high court judges they are not being subordinate to this supreme court judges so this is the one important thing which mainly highlighted in our constitution so apart from that supreme court has on many occasions reiterated the position uh, that the supreme court is superior to the high court only in appellate sense so what is appellate sense so we will be having the subordinate courts okay 
and we will be having high court and we will be having supreme court whenever the case which is mainly moving from subordinate court to high court and as well as high court to supreme court that is mainly through an appeal so in this appellate sense only we can see supreme court which is superior to this high court but normally we can see the power of this high court judge is equal to the power of supreme court judge and in the recent years there are some specific trends which mainly says that there is imbalance between this supreme court and as well as high court which is seen so which are those three important and specific trends so first one is supreme court uh, okay supreme court or the rather the section of its judges called as collegium so we will be having the collegium which is mainly focusing on appointment and as well as transfer of judges of high court and as well as supreme court so your exclusive exclusive authority which is present with the supreme court so this is the one important thing and next one is successive governments they have passed laws and that mainly create parallel judicial system of courts and tribunals which mainly provides for direct appeals to supreme court by passing the high court so second important one is so whichever the successive governments are coming so whatever the laws are mainly passed by the government they need to interpret by the judiciary right so because of whenever these laws are mainly passed by this government so they will create a parallel judicial system of courts and they are also coming up with tribunals so these tribunals and as well as these courts which mainly provide for direct appeals to supreme court okay and they are mainly bypassing this high courts so this is also one cause of concern and third important reason here is the supreme court has been liberal in entertaining the cases and as less pertaining some some unimportant matters okay now recently we can also see the trend here supreme court has been very much liberal in entertaining the cases which are unimportant and if we are talking about centralization and effects of centralization supreme court of india mainly by playing the role of collegium okay which mainly affects the power okay so because of the role of collegium which mainly pay, played by the supreme court of india so which is mainly affecting the power to appoint a person as a judge to a high court or to transfer him or her to another high court or to appoint okay or to appoint of a sufficiently senior uh, high court judge as a chief justice or as a judge of supreme court okay so what happen now we can see there is centralization of power that is seen with this supreme court okay supreme court now it is playing a role of collegium so this collegium which mainly deals with the appointment and as well as transfer of judges from this high court to another high court or even to appoint uh, appoint and uh, transfer the judges of this uh, supreme court so what happened now recently if you are talking about the trend so here the delay of appointment that is mainly seen regarding this uh, high court judges so this is also one cause of concern so because of this we can say there is a centralization of power that is present with the supreme court and we can also say there is a practical impact of uh, of this in the power dynamic between a high court and as well as judge of supreme court so because of this we can say there is some impact that is seen on this high court and as well as supreme court judges and moving to the second factor so if you are talking about some aggressively inventionist supreme court leads may need to approach its directly as a panacea for all its be falling be falling the nation okay so now what happened what are the policies that are mainly taken by the supreme court which is also need to uh, lead to an approach and it mainly directly it is a one problem okay and next one is supreme court which is also interfering which are clearly of local importance supreme court is also interfering in the matters and these matters are of local importance and do not have proper constitutional ramifications as well so this is also one important thing which mainly observed recently and every time the supreme court entertains the public interest litigation on some matters that could just as effectively have been dealt with by the high court okay supreme court also entertaining this pils public interest litigation actually that can be effectively dealt by the high court even though they are mainly dealing with this supreme court so because of this we can see there is some centralization of power that is mainly seen so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic so this article which mainly talking about cryptocurrency so after budget crypto signal india awaits reforms actually recently our finance minister in budget she made a statement regarding this tax on this crypto transactions so because of this this is a news and this is important from your gs paper 3 under economy 
So if we're talking about central theme, it mainly says that it is high time. It is high time that crypto made a splash in the country and it needs to be carefully managed with systemic changes. Okay. So it is a high time that crypto made a splash in the country and it needs to be carefully managed. Okay. So we need to manage carefully and we need to have some systemic changes. So here you need to know about context why it is in use and some important details and even what is the way forward and challenges. So these are the some important perspectives that you need to think about this topic. So if you're talking about context, it mainly says that in the union budget, in the recent union budget, our finance minister made a statement that that government of India announced that 30% flat tax rate, which mainly levied on the gains made by the transfer of virtual assets, including cryptocurrencies and as well as non-fugitable tokens. So whenever there is a transaction which is happening on these cryptocurrencies and as well as non-fugitable tokens, so on them, whenever the profits are uh, gained, so on that profit, they need to pay the tax of 30% to the government of India. So this is context and the president move amounts to a fee effectively uh, being a de facto affirmation of the role that cryptocurrency and related technologies that could play in Indian financial come electronic or economic system. So if you see this point which mainly says that so the president the president okay the president move amount so whatever the move that is taken by this government of India that will effectively be a de facto affirmation that Yes, we are going to accept this uh, cryptocurrency and related technologies. Okay, because across the world they move towards this cryptocurrencies, right? So we need to legalize the activities of this cryptocurrency startups and we need to enable and enable them to access the necessary support which might not have been available previously. So this is one important thing that we need to focus and these are the reforms that we need. So if we're talking about under which provisions income tax act of 1961 which mainly talked about taxing of these cryptocurrencies so cryptocurrencies they are not mentioned in our income tax act of 1961 okay although it is not present this article uh, sorry this uh, this act that is the income tax act 1961 does does not specifically mention the cryptocurrencies okay so in this act there is no mention of this cryptocurrencies and it does cast a wide enough net to bring crypto transactions under this ambit. So now we are mainly tra trying to bring this cryptocurrency also under the ambit of this Income Tax Act of 1961. And next one is capital assets. So trading in cryptocurrency may be classified as a transfer of capital assets. Okay. So whenever we are mainly considering that as a capital asset means we need to go for tax uh, tax uh, tax which should be imposed on this capital gains so what is this capital gains for example i am having so and so property okay i am going for selling of that so for example i got that property for 1 lakh rupees and now i sell for 5 lakh rupees so i will be getting a profit of 4 lakhs rupees on this 4 lakhs rupees i need to pay certain amount of tax to the government okay so this is called as capital gains tax and if you're talking about business income if such um, cryptocurrencies are held as a stock in trade and taxpayers is trading in them frequently, then the same will attract the tax under the head business income. Okay. So whenever I'm getting that, that taps, uh, capital, uh, capital gains. Okay. So whenever I am uh, also using this cryptocurrency in the, so in the stock, in the trade, and whenever I'm using this for the transaction, so it will mainly come into the business income and on this uh, tax should be paid here. Okay, so these are some important provisions. And if you are focusing on what are the challenges, first one is there is varied interpretations. Okay, first one is there is varied interpretations. So there is absence of explicit tax provisions that led to uncertainty and as well as varied interpretations being adopted in the relation to the mode of a computation, applicable tax and as well as tax rates laws and carry forward etc okay so there are no proper explicit tax provisions regarding this uh, cyber uh, cryptocurrency so because of this there is no proper uh, applicable tax head that we can impose here and so it's identifying this tax jurisdiction so it is often tricky to identify the tax jurisdiction for crypt for crypto transactions as taxpayers may have engaged in the multiple transfers across the various countries cryptocurrencies that may have been stored in the online wallets and as well as on servers outside india okay 
so people who are also up, uh, who are also using this cryptocurrency who are present outside the india so whenever you want to go for identifying of this trans uh, tax jurisdiction so it is a very very difficult task and next one is there is also anonymity of taxpayer so identities of taxpayers whose transact with uh, cryptocurrencies remain anonymous okay so here there is no proper identifying of this taxpayers and next one is lack of third party information on this crypto transaction so there is also lack of third party information on this crypto transactions so because of this it mainly makes it very much difficult to scrutinize and identify the instances of tax evasion okay and one of the most efficient enforcement tools in the hands of income tax department is cas cas mainly stands for computer aided security selection of assessment okay so it is mainly going for a collection of this information from the third party intermediaries such as banks and next one is physical goods or services may change in hand in return for cryptocurrencies so this cryptocurrency also can be used as a is as one of the important medium for the trade as well so whenever i am giving cryptocurrency if i need any goods i can take that goods right so if you are talking about what can be the steps taken so if you are talking about steps taken the first one is we need to bring up with a strong law so income tax laws which are mainly pertaining to this uh, cryptocurrency or crypto transactions they need to be made very much clear and we need to go for incorporating of detailed statutory provision as well and this one is we need to address this uh, generation so this could be followed by extensive awareness program or awareness generation program as well and next one is we need to have a separate mandatory disclosure so this practice which is uh, mainly focusing on the separate mandatory disclosure means in the case of us they need to go for uh, compulsorily saying of uh, what are the profit they got what uh, how to how much amount they paid so this type of separate mandatory disclosure that can be come up in india and next one is strengthening of international legal framework additionally the existing international legal framework for exchange of information that should be strengthened okay so what are the information that is present so that need to be strengthened and we need to uh, collect okay we need to collect and as well as we need to start information on this crypto technologies and next one is we need to go for taxing of tax officers so the government must impart training to its officers in blockchain technology and finally we can go for anti money laundering section okay that is united nations office on drugs and crimes cyber uh, cyber crime and anti money laundering session which has been developed as a unique cryptocurrency training module okay and this can aid equipping the tax uh, officials and even it will be help for understanding the technologies as well okay so this is about this topic and i hope it is very much clear and now let us try to see next topic title says states can ease covid curbs center so this article which is mainly talking about covid 19 related restrictions in the states as you all know because of the surge of cases that is recently seen due to this new variant that is omicron so again states came up with some restrictions that is mainly seen on movement so now this article which is mainly talking about economic activity should not be hampered by restrictions at entry points so whenever if you are talking about uh, economic activity for example we are mainly importing and as well as exporting so and so products from between the states as well okay so there will be some entry points so at this entry points we should uh, go for relaxation of restrictions such that we can ensure the free movement of this goods and services that is mainly happening so this will be helpful for enhancement of this economic activity because already we are facing a lot of economic crisis in the country right so now let us try to see the context it mainly says that center informed the states that they may review that they may amend or end additional covid 19 related restrictions okay so because now we are seeing there is a decreasing or declining trend of this covid 19 since january 21st 2022 onwards so if you see some details it mainly says that in a letter to states the health ministry said the daily case positivity on february 15th had been declined to 3.63 okay so there is declining of this positivity rate that is seen so because of this now we can go for relaxing of restrictions throughout not throughout the state but at the entry points so with the changing epidemiology of this covid 19 pandemic globally and in india 
the existing guidelines aimed at minimizing the transmission of this virus that had been renewed and as well as that can be updated. So this is the thing which mainly said by center. And the Union Minister of Health has accordingly revised the guidelines for international arrivals as well. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding NATO, US skeptical of Russian troop pull out. So in yesterday's lecture we studied about what was the crisis between Ukraine and as well as Russia. And now let us try to see what is the thing that is happening across the border. So already you know that across this Russia-Ukraine border there is increasing of this uh, military that is mainly seen from the Russian side. And recently because of uh, power of US and as well as because of influence of UK, so Russia said that they are going to pull out of these troops across this border. So now let us try to see what is the development in this issue. So if you see context it mainly says that Russia said more of its forces they are mainly surrounding Ukraine were withdrawing but NATO joined the US in saying it had it to be convinced and the pull out was real. Okay, Russia said that more of its forces which are mainly surrounding this Ukraine were withdrawing this NATO. So Russia says that they are mainly going for withdrawing of troops. Okay, but here US mainly said that so this pull it is not happening on the reality. So in Ukraine, Defense Ministry said its web portal had been hit by unprecedented cyber attacks. Okay, so even Ukraine which is also have, have some attack regarding the cyber attack. Okay, and next one is the Russian Defense Ministry published a video that it showed tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and even self-propelled artillery units. They were leaving this Crimean Peninsula which Moscow annexed in 2014. So Russia also released one video regarding this uh, pulling out of troops. But if you are talking about the units of southern military districts, they are having complete participation in the tactical exercises and moving for permanent deployment points. Okay, and it mainly comes after a day after Moscow said that it is going to pull its troops. But if you see US president said that more than 1,50,000 Russian troops they were mainly seen across this Ukraine border. And Russia's military build up seemed to be continuing around Ukraine. Okay, around Ukraine, there is increasing of Russian military build up. So here, uh, US also says that we have heard the signs uh, from the Moscow about the readiness to continue diplomatic efforts, but so far we have not seen any de-escalation. So US says that there is no proper de-escalation that is seen on the ground. So now let us try to see next topic it is regarding OROP scheme. Okay, that is one rank one pension scheme. So title says center presented more rosy or picture of one rank one pension scheme. It is a thing which mainly said by Supreme Court. So if you are talking about context in the last year there were some issues regarding this one rank one pension scheme. So if you see uh, context here it mainly says that. Supreme Court said centers hyperbole on one rank one pension scheme policy presented a much rosier picture. Okay, so the actually it was it was it is actually given to the pensioners of the armored forces. So here Supreme Court says that whatever the thing that is mainly taken under this one rank one pension scheme it is not good. So if you are talking about some facts regarding this one rank one pension scheme, it mainly implies uniform pension to personal based on rank and even length of service irrespective of date of retirement irrespective of date of retirement irrespective on based on ranks so they should be the uniform pension and the government had implemented the long pending demand of veterans in November 2015 as per the notification it has to be reviewed every five years and this armored force personnel who had retired till 30th June 2014 also covered under it. And implementation of this scheme which is mainly based on one important committee and this committee you have to remember for sure that is Koshiari committee. And if you see this infographic you can talk about details regarding this one rank one pension scheme. So what is this one rank one pension? It is like payment of uniform pension to military personnel who mainly retired in the same rank and with the same length and as well as the same service irrespective of date of reti retirement irrespective of date of retirement we need to go for one pension okay any hike in pension rates to be automatically passed on the past prisoners so if they are going for any amendments or any changes so that should be also given to the past prisoners 
okay and if you're talking about what are the problems problems here is there is no proper financial grant the grant of full one rank one uh, one pension will be further further bloat with the government pension bill and next one is there is huge task to pass all the benefits to the people that is ex servicemen and it even is there will also lead to similar demands by the other government employees as well who are working in the central paramilitary forces okay so these are some important things that you can see and you can also refer this um, infographic from our pdf you can download the pdf in telegram group and next topic is about india lack solar waste handling policy okay it is talking about solar waste handling policy actually this topic is important from science and technology and even environment and ecology which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 and now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that while india ramps up its solar power capacity okay while india ramps up that is we are going to increase the solar power capacity here the nation does not yet have a firm policy regarding how we have to manage the waste here okay how we have to manage the waste there is no proper pal policy in india so if you see for the details it mainly says that the international Reven renewable energy agency okay arena okay international renewable energy agency which mainly estimated that global photovoltaic waste that will touch us about 78 million tons by 2030 by 2030 we are going to have about 78 million tons of this uh, photovoltaic waste but we do not have proper policy till now so india currently consider that solar waste a part of electronic waste and it does not account for it separately so actually it is mainly considered under this electronic waste in india so recently one committee which is mainly formed and the name of that committee is rk singh committee and they are going to come up with a plan plan regarding circular economy especially in the solar panels and they will also focus on how to reuse recycle or uh, how can we go how can we go for waste generation recycling of this waste so that will be come up by this rk singh committee soon and this article also says that there is no commercial raw material recovery facility for this solar e waste operation in india okay but we can come up with a pilot facility for this solar panel recycling so this is the thing which mainly said and if you are talking about life of solar panel so the life is estimated like 25 years but some solar panels they will be got damaged because of a uh, uh, because of some quality issues and even before completing this 25 years also sometimes we can see the failure of the solar panels that can be seen okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says depression remains a neglected global health crisis it is according to lancet report so here we need to talk about this depression it is mainly related to our mental health not physical health but it is regarding our mental health so this article it is important from your health which mainly comes in a gs paper 2 so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that the world is falling to tackle the persisting and increasing serious global crisis of depression okay so now if you are talking about our world we are mainly going for tackling of persisting and as well as we are also seeing some increasing of global crisis of depression that is mainly seen so this is the thing which mainly said by our lancet world psychiatric association so if you see some more details it mainly says that it has estimated that 5 percentage of adults worldwide they mainly suffer depression every year about 5 percentage of adults they mainly face the depression okay so whenever they are having depressions means they will be having some negative impact negative impact on global health as well and we are also having a very poor understanding regarding the condition and we are having a very less understanding regarding lack of social psychological and as well as financial resources regarding prevention diagnosis treatment and as well as economic perspective or prosperity of the nations and also we can say there is an abundance evidence regarding uh, how to prevent depression and as well as recovery etc regarding source limited settings okay so we do not have proper knowledge regarding how can we prevent and as well as how can we go for recovery etc but in some developed countries and as well as some high income countries about half of the people they are suffering from this depression 
okay and this study which mainly says that that it mainly rises to 80 to 90 percentage even in the low and as well as middle income countries okay so this is about the data and if we're talking about influence of this COVID-19 yes I can say yes for sure there is some impact of this COVID-19 that is seen in the hardship behavior isolation as well as uncertainties in the people and this COVID-19 that led to exaggeration okay exaggeration of this mental condition in the people and if you're talking about way forward, what can be the way forward? So we can go for investing in reducing the burden of depression. Okay, and it will give the millions of people a chance to become healthier, happier and more productive members of the society. It will be helpful for becoming the healthier, happier and as well as more productive members of the society. And it will be also helpful for strengthening of our national economies. Okay, and it will be also helpful for achieving our sustainable development goals as well okay so now let us try to see explanation part for this today's question so these are the questions from your environment and ecology section so first question is sun is the only source of energy for all ecosystem on the earth so here the one important keyword you need to identify here is all but if you're talking about deep ocean ecosystem sun it is not at all the source so you can eliminate this and next one is of the incident solar radiation more than 50 percentage here the keyword here is more than 50 percentage actually it is less than 50 percent of it is called as photosynthetically active radiation so your two statements are incorrect so the correct answer will be for none and second question is regarding you need to identify the increasing order first you have to see the decrease that is the least and you have to finally go for the maximum right so here you need to identify the increasing order of productivity of ecosystem that is according to metric ton per year so if you have go uh, if you have studied your ncrts you might know about this topic actually this productivity topic it is very important from your uh, environment and actually it is from the first woodland from the first woodland we will be having a very less pro productivity and even shrubland and next one is continental shelf after the tropical rainforest after that open ocean so that answer will be the four and now let us try to see the today's questions so before seeing this today's questions i want to make a small announcement on this platform so we in Rathor's IS Academy, we launch a number of courses that will be helpful for clearing of UPSC. First one is your prelims test series. Second one is mains answer writing course. And next one is foundational course and individual courses. So this prelims test series and mains answer writing course that will be helpful to analyze the way where you are going, whether in the right direction or not. In this prelims test series, we are offering like 30 tests, which includes both CSAT and as well your GS. And this mains answer writing course, we will be giving you detailed one year plan okay we will be coming up with uh, weekly targets okay so based on that weekly targets daily one question will be given and on sunday there will be either essay or case study practice and if you send those answers to our email then there will be the evaluation will also be done and after evaluation there will be one-to-one -one mentorship so in this with this course it is exclusively beneficial especially for the people who do not have proper answer writing skills actually you know actually i think uh, you know or you might not be knowing so this uh, means it is a one of the important thing in your me in your upsc because it will make or break the deal okay so this new batch for this uh, mains answer writing course that is to be uh, started from this march first week so if you are interested so please be hurry up and registrations will be opened in the last week of february and next course is for and uh, we also launched entire foundation course for 2023 okay and here we are focusing on this conceptual clarity and even if you if you don't know at least anything in the upsc so if you watch these videos for sure i will be saying that there will be the conceptual clarity that you will going to get and apart from this foundation course we also have individual courses like if you have already done your foundational course but you are weak in so subject like economy or history or geography you can take the individual courses also so the prices of this course are very very absolutely cheap okay and it is also accessible for everyone and affordable for everyone so the details of this course are given given in our website you can visit our website so if you are visiting first time for our website uh, it will mainly ask for register you have to register with your email id then you can watch the three demo videos without paying a single penny so if you like it you can go for payment okay so if you have any doubt regarding these courses you can call to this number 8074765513 and i am the academic director of this rathors is you can talk to me directly okay 
and now let us try to see the today's questions so first question is regarding ecological pyramids so this ecological pyramids it is one of the important topic in your environment okay so we will be having pyramid of numbers we will be having pyramid of biomass we will be having pyramid of uh, energy so please try to read these three statements and give me your answer in the comment box and this one is regarding secondary succession so if you are talking about succession we will be having two types of succession primary succession and secondary succession so this article which is mainly talking about this second uh, this question is mainly asking about this secondary succession so you can read this examples of this uh, secondary succession and you can give you the you can give me the correct option regarding this okay so these are the two questions from environment session and try to answer these questions so by this i'm concluding today i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much